Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can set up your own AI model using Olama. This isn't going to cost anything, it's completely free, and it's a great alternative to ChatGPT. Because recently when I was working on some projects with ChatGPT, uh, my developer account, I guess I just didn't pay for the tokens, and uh, yeah, now my account is turned off so I can't use the API anymore. And that's when I found out about this library called Olama. If we look this up, we'll see it. you can get up and running with large language models locally. So it means we can download their model and then run it on our computer. And also when we deploy our app to production on something like a digital ocean virtual machine, we can install this library too and have this AI model for use. And we could have a completely free AI that we can talk to. So it looks like there's a few different options. There's Llama 2, Code Llama, which would allow you to write code, or you could ask the AI to write code for you. And there's, it looks like there's other models supported. So if we want to search in here, we can check out what else they have. Oh, this is really, really cool. Vision Encoder. And then all of these are free too. That's the coolest part. Oh, I didn't even explore more of this. This is insane. But yeah, that's funny. So there's like hundreds plus of different models. And I only really use the main one. Uh, that's crazy. Because see, if you just click the main one, it'll it'll show you like to download it. Just to download. Because first you have to install Olama. And then you can use Olama to run different models. So the first step really is downloading Olama. So you press download. And then choose the operating system you're on. So if you're on Mac, if you're on Windows, or if you're on Linux. So for me, I am on Windows, but I use Ubuntu in a WSL shell. So I'm going to download it for Linux. So all you do is you just run this command, which curls this, and then it puts it into, so it executes the install command. It's pretty simple. And then once you have that, you're going to be able to just type Olama into the console. And then you'll see it gives you a few different options of things that you can pass in. So here's all the available commands. And really, you, the one that we're going to use to run a model is the run command. So let's say I want to run llama2, because I already have that. I'll just say llama run llama2. Press enter. And it will start to run this model. And I can just directly talk this AI bot or this AI model <laughs> let's just ask like what are you an AI assistant designed to assist with a variety of tasks okay so llama2 is just an AI assistant so designed to assist with tasks and answer questions to the best of my ability I don't have personal experience or emotions like humans do. Hmm. I'm say, can you write code? I'm not able to write code, really? Okay. Let's ask, can you remember stuff? Yes, I'm able to store and retrieve information from my training data. This allows me to provide answers and assistance on a wide range of topics. Well, that's sick. So let's just ask, how can I train you? Oops, I spelled it wrong. <laughs> I'm just an AI assistant, so I don't have a physical body. Bro, I'm not saying I want to train you in the gym. Just my training is based on... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, you just told me you do, you are able to store things. So if I tell you something... How long will you remember it for? Okay. So that being said, like they're saying that they can remember stuff from their database, Llama 2's database, but they can't remember stuff from me. So.
I was gonna train you. I should give you. I should build my own database and then feed it to you. Yes, that's correct. If you want to train me to perform a specific task, you need to create your own data set or training data that I can learn from. And this is known as machine learning. <laughs> okay, so how can we make a machine learning app? Yeah, it's complex and time consuming, perfect. All right, so I'm just gonna get started and create our first machine learning app in Rails. So I'll just type in Rails new machine learning. And then I'm going to set the database to use PostgreSQL and Tailwind CSS as the framework. So this database is like, this doesn't really matter. You can use any database, but that's what we're going to be feeding to the framework. Now that we've created this new app, we can feed it into uh, the app folder. And then we can start the server within slash dev. Now that we start the server, our app will be available in the browser at localhost port 3000. Now we let's just create the database and then we'll see that we're on the Rails logo screen, which means everything's set up and our app is running on Rails. So from here, uh, the first thing that we could do is just change the root of this app so that we're showing a page with some content. We can add some text and stuff. And yeah, we can just turn it into more of an application. So to do that, we just need to create our first controller. So we can do a generator for this. Let's just do a Rails G controller command and I'll generate a pages controller. And then I'll do a home action because I want to do a home page. And I'll just press enter. This will uh, create the controller and it'll also create the page. But now we need to change the routes. So I'm gonna do that by editing the config routes to RB. I'm just going to go in here and I'll delete this route for the pages home. And I'll just come down here to where this route is commented out and I'll delete the comment. And I'll update this to go to the pages home. Now I can right click out of that and just restart the server. And now we'll see that uh, we're on the home page and everything looks like it's showing up correctly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open up the code in VS Code in the code editor. So I'm just able to view it a little bit nicer. And then now, okay, we have our home page. So this looks good. From here, I could go and just change the text on the home page. And let's just say like my custom AI model. What we need to do now is generate the table that we're gonna store all of our information that we're gonna to feed to the model. So I'm gonna do a scaffold for this. And now we just need to call our table something. So we could call this like training. All right, and then I'm going to add some attributes on this model. So training might have like this body. And I'm just gonna do plain text because with AI, I don't really know if we can feed it like images or anything yet with the llama model. So I'm just gonna do pure text. Then we can use this to help train our AI model. So I'll show you what I mean. So let's generate that scaffold and I'll run Rails TV migrate to update the database and I'll restart the server. All right, now I wanna actually add a button to train the model. So we'll go down here say link to train model and this is going to go to the trainings path then we can style the button a little bit some padding a background and that should be good oh maybe change the color the color of the text to be lighter and we can add some spacing break and then we click train model we come to this trainings page so this is all generated by that scaffold command uh, kind of just set this up nicely and then we could do our new training and anything that we type in here 
we would then later pass into the AI model and we're going to talk to it. So let's see if this even works. Like, let's get started. So let's first add a page where we can talk to the AI model. So I think I'll do another one called... I'll, I'll do a scaffold for chat messages. It's also going to have body text. And then I'll do Rails DB migrate. Slash dev. And I'll probably add another button next to train model that will say, like, talk to AI. I'm just going to copy this. And say talk to AI. And then this will go to chat messages path. Yeah, but I probably want it to be a different color. Talk to AI. So that would be like the chat message. Although I might want to do this a little bit nicer. So I think what will happen is when I click talk to AI, it'll pop up the form down here. And I can do that pretty easily with Hotwire. That's the framework that's built in with Rails. So every time you do a Rails new and you create a new app, we already have all of this framework that I'm about to show you. So what we can do is we can have a turbo frame at the bottom that's just empty. Turbo frame tag. And then we're gonna call this uh, chat messages. And then when we do link to talk to AI, we're gonna add an attribute on here. It says data and then turbo frame. And we're gonna make this match chat messages turbo frame. So now when you click on talk to AI, see it's not going to change the page, it's actually just going to change this, which now says content missing, uh, because it was expecting that there was going to be a matching turbo frame uh, called chat messages on this page, so wherever we're navigating it to. So we just need to copy this turbo frame and go and add it to the chat messages path. So that'd be over here on the index, although I probably don't want to go to the index anymore, I probably just want to go straight to like new chat message so let's change this to new chat message path and then let's go to the, the in the views folder let's go to the chat messages new so this is our page to create a new chat message and let's just put the turbo frame in here we'll wrap around this header and then also the form and the back button because the back button can still be used to help navigate out of the frame so what we're going to do is we're going to add do to turn this into a block so we can wrap all of these items and then we'll make sure to add end at the end of here so now we have the turbo frame set up correctly and now if you see what happened if i click talk to ai well it should have popped up it looks like something went wrong let's see oh it did work see new chat message although that's a little bit too large now uh because you'll see this is text 4 xl so let's try to tune that down a little bit and also we could add some margin uh, so there already is a little bit between these see there's a break but it's not really adding enough if we just add margin top on this that's probably fine okay and then this would be how i can talk to ai and then if i press back uh should work although we get this content missing because there wasn't a matching turbo frame. So all we need to do is change this back button. Let's actually change this instead of like this long back button. Let's just say cancel. Right, that should work too. Cancel just like that. But let's also change it to go not the chat messages path. Instead, it should just go to I guess the root path. Because that's where our or actually like the home page, but that's the same as the root path. So then yeah, we press cancel. And now everything works if we want to cancel and then click talk to AI again. It'll still work. So yeah, everything's working pretty nicely. Now I want to actually have this set up so that when I say like, hey, and I <laughs> create it. So it is, it is saving the message, but it's not actually talking to AI. And we also get this error kind of thing. So let's fix this up. To do this, we're going to go into the controllers, chat messages controller. So you see, we already have all this code in here because that was just from the scaffold. When you do a scaffold, it generates the model, generates the controller, and it also generates the views. So it's very helpful because it speeds up the process as a developer to just be able to scaffold the object 
and have all the pages already set up and they look nice that is incredible but there's some things that you have to change up to get it to work uh when you start like changing things obviously so that's what we're doing right here so right here in the create action this is when we're creating a new chat message so you'll see we have this format.html at the end where we're just redirecting we would normally just redirect to the object so we're going to need to change this to go back to the root path and that, that'll fix that content missing issue. Uh, but also we're going to need to actually pass this into AI to have AI process the message, right? So to do that, I'll probably put it in a background job because when we're talking to AI, it could take a second. So we don't want to slow up like the process of the request. So we still want to redirect the frame. We don't want it to load or anything. And then we can just broadcast the results back to the page after. Uh, we could do this all using Hotwire. So actually first, if we are gonna do that in the background job, we need some identifier of the user and we need to be a, like turbo streaming from something. But right now, I mean, we can make it simpler than that though. Cause usually in the app, you would wanna stream to specific users. But in this one, we're not, we haven't even added users or anything. So I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm actually just gonna turbo stream from a generic thing, but you're just gonna wanna think about that if you're trying to scale your app. Uh, when you're turbo streaming to just a generic one, it means you're streaming to uh, everybody who's on that page. So I'll show you what that means. You can do turbo stream from tag at the top. So it just looks like we do some Ruby and then we say turbo stream from, and then we put the name that we're streaming from. So for us, let's just say AI messages. Right, because what I want to do is every time we get a new AI message response, I want to show it on this page. Now, what I'm going to do is underneath this turbo frame tag, I'm going to add a div ID, which is going to be set to AI messages. Okay, and then this will be set up pretty nicely. So then we can just broadcast to that when we're ready. And then what we're going to do is create a new background job. So I'm going to go in the console real quick. I'm just going to do the generator for that. So I'll type in Rails G job. Try to zoom this. And it'll be like AI response. Alright, something like that. It doesn't really matter. Just as long as we can remember it. And now we go into the create. And what we want to do is probably after it saves, so after we know the chat message is saved, just in case there's any validations, then we'll do this job. Say, wait, I've already forgot it. What is the AI response job? Maybe it wasn't a good name for it. I'm gonna say perform later, which means it's gonna do it later outside of the request cycle. Now, what we have to do is pass in the ID, and then we'll be able to find that later inside the job. So, let's go over to that job. Uh, we can go jobs, AI response job inside here. I'm gonna update the args to, to have the arg that we're passing, which is the chat message ID. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the chat message by doing a query. So we're gonna say chat message on the class, we're gonna find, and then we're gonna pass in the chat message ID that we're getting as an argument. Okay, great, so now we have the chat message and we can do some stuff with this. So we can get the chat message body and that's what we'd be passing to AI. So how do we pass it to AI? Well, that's a good question. So there's actually a Ruby gem for interacting with Olama's API, which means that's perfect for us because we use Ruby and we'll be able to easily connect to our AI model and talk to it. So let's go and add this. So we just have to add this gem to our gem file. So we go over to gem file, paste that gem in. Then we go back to the terminal, I have to stop the server and then do bundle install. All right, this will add our new gem. Perfect, we can restart. And then let's take a look at the code here. So what we have to do is we have to require it, I guess. Or it should, actually it should already be auto-required uh, with Rails, so I don't think you have to do this. And then we would just take this code, which we're setting the client, uh, which that should already be set up. And then we're also gonna get the result. So this is where we'd be getting the result from the AI model, and the prompt is whatever we'd pass in. We're just gonna copy these two parts. I'm gonna go back to the AI response job. I'm gonna paste it in right here. 
And then now the only thing we have to change is this prompt. And we'll pass in chat message dot body. And just like that, we have set up our app to start talking to AI and pass in the chat messages. Uh, so this is really cool already. And then you'll see that we have this option model, which right now by default, they're doing Llama 2. But like I showed you before early in the video, there's so many models to look through. So this is really exciting to be at this point in time because we can go back to that page and we can switch out the models and try other things. And we can see what other options they have. Like maybe it's not prompt. Maybe we can pass in files and things like that. I'm not even sure. Oh, it looks like you do. Yeah, look, text, image. They definitely, you definitely can pass in images. So I'm gonna have to learn more about this. All right, so now that we've set up the training and then also the chats, now we just need to see if uh, we can talk to the model about things that we've trained it on. Okay, so right now there isn't really any trainings, but we can go ahead and give this a try. So first, let's go and talk to it. And then let's ask it something like, What's my YouTube channel called? All right, we're gonna create the message. Uh, let's see what happens. So actually, I don't know if we ever implemented streaming the response back. I don't think we did. Uh, so <laughs> what we were supposed to, we had this turbo stream set up to turbo stream from AI messages, and then we we're going to turbo stream there and then also target ID. So if we're gonna do that, we'd probably do this at the end of the job. We'd say on the chat message, we're going to broadcast update to. And then we have to put the name of the turbo stream. Which for us, it was this AI messages. Let me grab that. And the target is also AI messages. Now we can just simply put the HTML is, oh, except for the result is usually an array. So let's say the text equals result.map. get the response and then join them all together because usually how it does it is it splits up the message into different chunks I guess so you can maybe so you can stream it to the page uh, so to get the actual text we just need to do this we need to map all the results and then join the responses all right and then the HTML we can pass in is just a text and then now this might work a little bit better just say hey okay yeah and then we get the message hey there how's it going what's up and we could definitely style this a little bit better like the reason why it's not styled is we're passing html which means it's only passing text but if we wanted to do a partial let's do a partial we can do let's put this in the chat messages slash ai response so that's a partial and then we're going to add in a local I'm going to set the text so we're going to be able to access the text inside of this partial. So then we just need to go create the partial inside of the views folder in the chat messages. I'm going to create a new file. It's going to be underscore AI response dot HTML the Airbnb. So this is going to be the partial that we're going to add to the page every time we get a response. And inside of here, we would just style it like normal. Maybe we want to have a little bit of margin, maybe a nice background to stick it up in the rest of the page. And then inside of it, we would put the text like this. So we could display the text. And now let's see what would happen if we said like, hey, waiting. All right, and now we get a nicely formatted response. Now, if we wanted to store the messages too, we could change the turbo method that we're doing inside of the job. So right now broadcast update to just means it'll replace everything inside of this div. But if we wanted to, let's say append, so that just adds to the top. You can do that too, and that's a little bit more like how ChatGPT works. I'm like, yo, I should just add it, and I'm like, hmm. Let's see, interesting. Is there something you'd like to? Oh, it's appending it. Maybe I want pre. Oh yeah, I definitely want prepend. Prepend means add to the top. Append means add to the bottom. So I'll change it to prepend, and you see when I reload, they all get uh, lost. That's because I'm not displaying them on the page i'm just broadcasting them but we could display them if we wanted to going good see it's we're already having uh, a nice talk with a 
I'm glad to hear this. Wait, let's see. Can it store? Like, can I ask him what did I... What was the first thing I asked you? I want to know if it knows. The first thing you asked me was, what was the first thing I asked you? <laughs> okay, well, okay, that kind of answers my question. So it means it doesn't really remember, like, way back here. Fine. Okay, so now's the part where we want to ask it, like, what about my YouTube channel? My YouTube channel called. Okay, let's see if it knows. It's taking a little bit long. Cued. Is it is it actually still processing? There's no way. It says it's performing, but look. It <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, we did get it. I'm just an AI. I don't have. Uh, so yeah, it doesn't know anything. But inside the training, here's where I was gonna tell it, like my YouTube channel called Indigo Tech Tutorials. And then we'll create our training. So now we see this is all our trainings. And then we try to pass that into the model. So to pass that in, I'll show you how old I'm gonna do that. I don't know if this is you know the best way, because this is my my first app using Llama. There's probably a way to like actually update the model itself with your uh, training what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put it in a prompt right before the body so let's just let's actually move this into like a prompt variable so like here is some data you could know about for my question right and then right here we're gonna pass in that data so uh, we can just create another variable call it training data and training data is going to go to all the training models and it's actually going to pluck the uh, wait did we call it body so we're going to get all the bodies together now this is going to be an array so what i'm going to do is i'm going to join it just join it and then it'll automatically put a space between it so that should be fine and then we'll just pass the training data in and i'll say <clears throat> here's my question and then the, where the question we put the chat message dot body. Now I don't know how this is gonna work, but let's just give it a try. So now if I talk to AI, I'm just gonna give it a, a simple message first, like yo. And then, oh, we're getting an error in the console. Error performing. It says no method, undefined method prompt. Ooh. Oh, I, I forgot the equal sign. Whoops. Prompt equals this. Okay. Now it looks good. We're passing in prompt here, so everything should be good to go. Say hello. Let's see what it does. Hello there. It's great to hear that you have a YouTube channel called Indigo Tech Tutor. <laughs> see, I don't want it to bring it up right away. I said, here's some data you should know about for my question. Uh, here is some info about me now here is my now how about now answer my question <laughs> see messing with AI models is kind of annoying sometimes just to just get it perfect so I'm just like hey what's up I wanted to just give me back the original one but I think because I'm giving it the YouTube channel it wants to somehow incorporate that Hey there, it's great to hear about your YouTube channel. And you know what, this is fine. Let's ask it, what's the name of my YouTube channel? Sure, I'd be happy to, based on the information provided, I believe the name of your YouTube channel is Indigo Tech Tutorials. It is. But hey, we are kind of training it. Let's try something else, new training. Favorite ice cream is, uh, Wait, I don't even know my favorite ice cream. Maybe that's a big yellow dash is fire. Now, let's go back to the AI models. Talk to AI. Hello, Mr. AI model. 
It's probably gonna bring up my YouTube channel and my favorite ice cream right away. Let's see. I don't see anything happening. It was kind of slow for just a question about hey. Glad to meet you. It's cool that you have a YouTube channel. What kind of tech-related content do you have? As for your favorite ice cream flavor, cookie dip. <laughs> I'm more of a fruit-based ice cream person myself. Wait, you're not a person. You're an AI model. Do you have any favorite fruit-based ice cream flavors? So here, the question now is, I wanna just store my data, but I don't want it to talk about it every time. I like mango ice cream. It's probably gonna redo the whole thing and like talk about my YouTube channel, talk about my cookie dough. You know, it's not just gonna save like this part. The answer of this, so I need to figure that out. But already, this is very cool. And this is probably like the same the same experience you could expect from OpenAI. Now, OpenAI, you can you can trade assistants and you can give them roles for stuff to do. So that part works pretty well. But I'm sure there's a way to do that. So yeah, look, see, it says, nice to meet you again, even though they already met me. So I'm curious how we could fix this sort of problem. Maybe we pass it in like, here is the previous messages in our conversation. We could actually put in like the previous messages. Yeah, just by just getting the chat messages all oh. forget if there's just text or if it's body we're gonna pluck them and we're gonna join them now i have no idea this is gonna be a lot of stuff that we're giving the ai model so it might freak out Looks like we got an error it says column text okay right so there wasn't a text column it must just be body unless i did rich text i can't remember no nah, it must just be body oh yeah it literally says body right there i'm typing in the chat of course your youtube channel is called indigo text tutorials in your favorite ice cream flavor Okay, so now it seems to be doing a little bit slower, maybe or a little bit less because I think I'm passing it all the messages so it can know what I've already, of course, I'd be happy. But then it keeps, now it keeps asking, it keeps doing like the same thing as the last time. It keeps pulling up my, my last question, you know what I mean? Because I'm passing in the previous messages. But I wanted to talk about only like the current topic. Okay, now we can see what called. Ah, oh, yes, you want me to know the name of your YouTube channel? See, so like it's all over the place. All right, let's not let's not pass into that. Wait, this is still pretty cool. You can get yourself working chat GPT even if without the training part. Just being able to talk to it like this is cool. And then if we want to display the message history, it's actually really simple. Uh, it would just be on like the whatever page we're on. I think we're on just the home page. Yeah, right here. We can just render all of the chat messages. We could render chat message, pass in the chat message. And now let's reload and look at that. Oh, I guess I have to set the exact path because we're in the we're in the pages home, like we're in the pages folder. So there's no chat message partial. I need to actually set this to the chat messages folder slash chat message so it'll know where to look. And then you'll see we have all of our nice messages just printed out here. Now I feel like there was. I guess we didn't really have anything like cleaned up chat message partial, but we could clean it up ourselves. In here, if we just want to get rid of some of the stuff, like we don't really want to show it, we just want to only uh, show like the text. 
Yeah, now it looks like this. We might want to style that a little bit more. I've been styling it here. I'm going to give it a blue background. This is like our, our outgoing text, right? And then we would also display the AI text. Uh, so that could use a little bit of spacing, but we're kind of getting to where I want to be. Top, we'll do flex, gap floor. All right, what we'll do is we'll render the chat message, and then right underneath, you can render that messages AI response. And we just have to pass in the text. It could be chat message. Oh, are we never in the AI response job? Are we never updating? The chat message i don't think we are so we need to save that ai response real quick so right now we haven't been saving it i forget do we have uh any field we don't even have a field for that so we're gonna have to go and add a field to store this so let's do a new migration in the console and do rails migration add let's just call it ai response to chat messages and then we'll do space AI response, which will default to a string. And then we can just migrate the database. And it added this new AI response field onto our chat messages model. Perfect. So then at the end of here, once we have the text, let's just update the chat message. AI response text. And we can still pass everything in, that's fine. And then on the home page. When we're passing in text, we just pass in chat message dot AI response. But right now we don't have any. Uh, so I'm just gonna go in the console and I'll delete all of those previous chat messages. I don't have to, it's just since they didn't have the responses saved. Alright, so now it looks like this. My custom AI model if we want to talk to AI. We're just gonna say hey. And let's see what happens. Looks like it's just loading. It'd be cool to maybe get like a AI typing effect too. We could definitely do that. All right, perfect. So first message, and then if we did reload, uh, it would look like this. <laughs> oh, this isn't how we want it to look. Uh, shoot, I need to add some style. I need to make those stack one on top of each other. Oh yeah, because we did flex. Oh, actually, I want to flex call. Well, that should fix it by itself, but there still be a little bit of too much gap so I'm gonna add a container around these inner elements it's a simple div it will change the styling something like this so then we have our message and then the AI response we could store a history if we talk to it Great, thank you for sharing more about yourself. And then if we did want to show like our message too, right now we have to reload. See, it kind of, now you see like the first message, the second message. Also, we probably want to flip this around so that's the other way. Uh, if you know what I mean, like so that the, the latest one is showing up at the top. So to do that, we can go on top of where we're getting the chat messages. We're gonna order them. Create it at descending. So that'll show the latest created one first. Oh, oh, I meant to say order, not on each, but on the all. We can order them and then we can loop through them with each. Like pizza, hey. All right. I need a new keyboard, guys. I keep pressing the wrong key and it's so loud. I hate this keyboard. But we're gonna get one someday. This channel is gonna get better. Yeah, so it's so slow. I really wanna add that effect. Hey there. So I forgot what I said. What's a fun video game to say? Oh yeah. So see, it's weird how they do like this whole intro first, because we already covered that. But I'll try to fix this in a future video and I'll figure out how can we, you know, train a llama model better and make it more accurate. But right now this is just cool that you're able to 
have a chat GP, even if you take out the training part, just having an AI model that you can run in your app for free, plus all the hundreds of other models that we can look through. Llama is just one of them. But if you look in here, there's a ton of other ones. There's open model. I don't even know what open model is. Does that mean we can train it more? See, we have to, these are things that I need to understand. And I'm going to try to do them uh, for you guys too, to show you. Star coder. Like, this is kind of cool. I want to, I definitely want to, uh, wait, a prompt so you pass in code and then it gives you the back the response. See, that's, that's kind of random, but I'm sure that's not like the only purpose of using it. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, if you did, smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and stay tuned for new videos.